Hey, this is Zeiger. Welcome to the first stream on Train Sim World 4. That has been released in early access yesterday for everybody else than the people playing on Epic Game Store like me. So, where is the tag Train Sim World 3? The tag of the stream, or what are you saying, AJ? I remember changing it to Train Sim World 4, but maybe I did not change the correct tag. Me. I punched it in the schedule at any rate. Yeah, but I can see it is still the wrong tag. No. Is it no changed? Is it no changed? No, it is good. Great. Well, yeah. Anyway, good evening, H. Thank you for moderating this stream again. And uh, yeah, I actually planned on doing this yesterday, but I was not able because we could not play the game on Epic Game Store for a while. And I spent most of the evening writing on the forums and talking to people at Dovetail Games and uh, JD actually looked into stuff and they managed to get it running some at some point in the night and uh, this is why I have now a not totally virgin installation of the game but some clutter of different DLCs that were actually promise to be online not before the official release date but we have them now what is what is still missing are the core routes of trains in world 2 and the summer pass routes and the core routes of trains in world 3 all this package stuff today wrote to me today that uh, today JD wrote to me that the team thinks that it will all come online on release date on September the 26th I I'm not so sure about this. We should have a higher number of DLCs in the DLC counter and more of the obscure Smithfield um, DLCs. Of course, all the Smithfield DLCs that are in my Epic Games uh, add-on add manager are already installed. And I don't have the roots. And if there are no more hidden Smithfield roots, then... Well, we will have to look for our packaged routes again. But, well, yeah, maybe I'm wrong and we will just be good on September the 26th. Um, what they managed to fix was that the um, East Coast Mainline Peterborough Doncaster was not available at the beginning and now it is. At least it is here. I've never not played it yet because I wanted to start touching stuff in the unboxing stream. The only thing that I played a bit was for all back to see if the game is running at all. So I played one or two services and well, some things are not so super great. Um, but we will get to this. So AJ, what do you think since we are unboxing this? The first thing that we might want to do is play the introduction. Mm -hmm. huh? There is a training module, the only one that comes with this one for our good introduction difficulty one mm -hmm. and five minutes. Let's see what they what they pro, uh, what they prepare for us to see here at Bregenz. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I can switch on the DLC marker for the first time. See here, I've got Train Sim World 4, s for 4, all back. Welcome to Bregenz Bahnhof, located in Vorarlberg, the westernmost state of Austria. Yes. The original station began construction in 1870, 
although this was demolished 30 years ago in 1989, before the station was rebuilt 500 meters west of the original location. All right, I did not know that. For Albert being the... Okay. Ah. Looks like the workers haven't finished placing the road maps. Let's place a missing one while you wait. Oh no, I have... There are more route tasks to discover. Make sure to apply more route maps, fix snow height poles, and collect chocolate bars and Tyrolean hats. Tyrolean hats. Your colleague, David Meyerhofer, would like to speak to you. Oh, colleagues have names now. Daniel? Congratulations on completing your apprenticeship. It's going to be fun to work together again, even if I couldn't tempt you into the rock star lifestyle of construction. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited to start working on the rails. Are you waiting for your ride? You'll be waiting a while as we're not due to finish work on this platform until next month. Okay. Then it will probably take longer than the five minutes that were announced. Maybe you're supposed to be on platform three. Ha, oh, classic first day prank. You better make it there quickly before he thinks it's funnier to leave without you. Okay, but we're not running across the... Can't run anyway, across the tracks. So AJ claims dips on the chocolate bars. You don't say. I thought you might call dips <laughs> on the Tyrolean hats. Chili, what's up? Why are you barking like mad? Ah, oh, maybe she heard another dog outside. Take a seat. The train is just about to leave. What? The doorbell rang? I did not hear the doorbell. AJ, can you check if there is any... if there is anyone outside actually? Oh! We were supposed to sit down, not to harass the driver. Alright. The Vorarlberg Railway was first proposed by railway entrepreneur Karl Ganal in 1847 when he recognized the necessity for a railway in the area. He would go on to pay for much of the preliminary work out of his own pocket. That was where the times when you could pay for a railway out of your own pocket. Construction began in 1870 and met many delays due to needing approval from all the neighboring states in the area. Finally, in 1872, public services began between Bludenz and Lochau. Shortly after, in 1873, connections to the wider Austrian railway network were completed, and services between Zurich in Switzerland and Munich in Germany would use this line. So the first thing... In 1954, electrification work on the line was completed, although electric trains couldn't pass into the German rail network. This meant passengers and international services to Germany had to change to a diesel service in Lindau. Lindau. Take the train to Austria. Spanning cross-border, the busy Vorarlberg S-Bahn line shuttles from quaint German island life to the foothills of the Austrian Alps. All new and bustling ÖBB traffic awaits in train zone world. All right. So this was the route introduction. Here, and can you see how the the text for the points and the level overlap? Hey, it's a bit weird. Main menu. So what I played actually yesterday was the introduction to the Talent One train, and one or two services in the. 
um, journey. For four Alberg. But that's all that I did so far. So I did the introduction. I got my platinum medal that always reminds me a bit of a purple heart. I hope this is not a bad omen. And, um, well, the Brigens to St. Marguerite, and that is the northernmost part of the track. Maybe we just replay that. What day is it here? What time in Winston's cloud level? We can't see what time of day that service is. Obviously later. Well, I want to replay this one because I want to show you the strategic positioning. AJ doesn't know what a purple heart is. Manve Valer, morning tiger, he says. Morning Manve. I recognize your name from my YouTube channel. Nice to have you on the chat. And from my Discord server, by the way. How are you doing? Brigens to St. Margariten here. What I wanted to show you is the strategic placement of the signals. I'm not playing the service now, I'm just um, sitting here in my train. And obviously we are in the starting position here. So we are supposed to load passengers. Obviously we have to set up the lights and everything correctly, but that is not the problem. The problem is, when we're sitting in our starting position, we are not allowed to start our train against a red signal. If the signal shows stop, we are not supposed to even go closer to the signal unless we get the special permit. This is why we should actually see the signal. Well, we're not seeing the signal because it is hidden by the station roof. And because we are not seeing the signal, um, very nice that you made it to, to a live stream finally. What, 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 what if you're not seeing the signal, then we need a signal repeater, like this one. In Austria, they are called Signal nach Arme, or is, for German ears, a quite weird word, because it sounds a bit like signal impersonator. Um, but nevertheless, they are actually copying the signal, so that we can see what the signal is showing, even if we can't see the signal. But the problem is, this does not really work if we cannot see the signal repeater and this is obviously the signal repeater that belongs to this track our signal repeater is placed strategically here behind the station roof so that the pigeons on top of the roof may see but not us that is definitely one thing the people that place the station roofs and the signals should talk because that is obviously not a great situation so if you start the service you would have to go blindly until you see the signal repeater before you know if you have been allowed to start your train or not <laughs> you got an Antelab Valley yeah we will get to this later and what is a Purple Heart, AJ? A Purple Heart is a medal that you get in the United States Armed Forces if you get uh, injured in the line of duty. That's why I said maybe, or I hope, is it, it is not a, a bad omen. Obviously it is heart-shaped. And it has this um, purple a ribbon. And this is in, in the platinum metal here has a purple ribbon as well. So this is why it reminded me of a purple heart, I think. So Feldkirch to Sankt Margareten. Maybe we can use that one. That is a longer service. Or maybe we want to go the whole line for a bit to see what is happening happening there. Blue dance to Lindau, blue dance to Lindau. But I don't 
necessary one to go to Germany. You can see this is about one hour, one hour twenty five going from Bludenz, what is obviously the southernmost station where we ha that we have in this Feldkirch to Lindau, Gerieten to Dorenbieren. That is somewhere in the middle of the track. Well, then let's do a Feldkirch to St. Marguerite and see where we end up. Feldkirch, that means we're starting in the middle, we're not starting at the southernmost station. But somewhere in the middle. I passed through Vorarlberg a couple of times when we were going to holidays in southern France with my parents at the time. Don't think that I have been to Vorarlberg since. And as it was explained in the root introduction, it is actually the 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 Oh, which is night. Well, then we we may be actually able to see our PCB indicator. So let's let's take it. You're going to start out on the shorter services up to the Swiss border. There are only a few stops on the service, so it's a good way to ease yourself in. Okay. And here we actually see our exit signal. Master switch. Unlock the doors. What was that again? Left side. Oops. Left side. I, I did not open the doors on the right side. No, it didn't do anything. And then what do we need to do? Headlights instead of tail lights. Signal lights direct standard UVB because we're running in Austria. And here is the switch for the PZB and there was a switch for the CIFA. So we have PZB and CIFA just like in Germany. Now let's have some instrument lights. We need our brake handle. Let's see if we can get those PZB indicators working. That is actually a nuisance on the services that played so far that you can't see at all what the PZB indicators are telling you. I think it is safe to close the doors now, lock all doors. Let's see if they actually lock. They locked. And you see, I, I tried to find a solution for the hot settings that are satisfying enough. But I can't get rid of these indications for the, high, uh, for the speed limit and for the gradient. No, in this layout here, no, without losing the hut altogether, and then I have no idea where we actually are on the route. So I am not totally convinced yet that this is a better solution than the hut that we had before. Oh yeah, the reverser. We should use the reverser. For once the player assist was right. And there we go. Why is this thing on? I turned it off. But this is the problem. As soon as you get into an introduction or into a tutorial thingy, then it always automatically turns on objective markers and stop markers. And it does not turn off by itself, but you have to do it or live with it. What is our limit? 60. Now we are getting a shunting allowed signal with a repeater that tells us we are allowed to go. We can actually see the starting program of PZB flashing. 60. So if we want to go 60 we have to release since we got the repeater telling us that we are approaching a clear signal. Why not? Getting a shunting clear here. So actually it's a protection signal, but not a green light.
but now we're getting a green light. If you go to accessibility, you can hide the speed if you want. Is that so? In accessibility, he says. Hot toy mini show scores. Uh, but I, I put it on to hide. Show current speed limit and it still shows. Show and hide. So, I don't know how I can hide it anymore. I can accelerate to 110. So I have no clue where the next signal is and where the next station is. This uh, distancing isn't it quite handy to have the speed limit there? It is handy, but I don't want to have it that easy. 140. I want to check here and I want to learn the route and then see it from the from the signs at the sign. <laughs> the button must be broken. <laughs> well, I can I can check wh what it is what happens if I put it to show. Feldkirch Amberg will be the next 140 we can go at the moment. 140 is obviously the maximum speed. But we're not stopping here. Obviously, Rankweil at 601 is where we are supposed to stop, and we are allowed to go 140 and then 100. This is a repeater that tells us we are approaching a green one. Green one, distance signal, next one will be green two. That looks good. I'm not getting more headlights than this. So, to be fair, as nice as it is to run at night, maybe it is more interesting for people watching if we are leaving the service and, and playing one during day so that we can see a bit of the scenery. Yes, Kara agrees. She wags her tail and beats the the floor. You you liked it? It has a horror feel to it. <laughs> well, let's see. At least I know now that um, the piece B indicators can be seen at night. The St. Margarita, the Feldkirch, Feldkirch, the St. Margarita, maybe there is a service that is a bit during day. It's same thing here again. The horror feel is nice, but let's see, let's get different impre impression, different impressions of the route. And I was a bit too late to break for the station anyway, so it didn't hurt to get out of this one here. The Feldkirch, the St. Margarita again. Mm. Yes, I know. Master switch. Not unlock all. Unlock left side door. Kara, don't hit. Unlock right side doors. Here, unlock left side doors. So this switch is a bit clumsy. Or maybe we have just to get used to it. Oh, we didn't see that there was actually a rock wall next to our train. And now, see, it is almost impossible to see anything on the PZB indicators. Brake handle we still need. 
the light we set wipers we don't need the PIS is automatic lust now it says we're going to lust now but actually the service is supposed to go to St. Margareten. We are stopping there. We're not going to Switzerland. We're stopping at the penultimate stop, still in Austria, so that we don't have to go to Switzerland. If we have a look at the map of the route, let's do this so that we know where we are. So this is Feldkirch. What is in the south is Bludens from Bludens. There is uh, another line, another S-Bahn line in real life going even more south, I think, to... What was the name again? Some weird name, too. I forgot it. And here is the name from Hartfulbach to Lust, and now this is where we are going. And here you would be able to go to Switzerland, to St. Margareten. This is the branch that goes to Germany, around the Bodensee, to Lindau. Obviously, and from Feldkirch, where we are starting here, there is actually a little line that is going to the west, and it has not been represented in the game, and it is going to Switzerland too, to Buchs. But the funny thing is that it is going through a country that is called the Principality of Liechtenstein, that is more or less here. It is a really, really small country, so by not adding this branch, they missed out on the opportunity of adding another country to the list of countries covered and uh, at the same time they missed, they, they missed the opportunity to represent the rail network of one country in its entirety because those three stations with the connecting line about 10 kilometers or nine is the whole network of the country of Liechtenstein and uh, that will have been a thing huh, to have the whole network of a country in, in one DLC. Maybe we'll get this later sometime when, when people can create it. And um, yes, what is what, what? Yeah, the interesting thing that we would not have gotten any uh, Liechtensteinish uh, signaling or train control because this line is actually owned by UBB by the Austrian carrier. And they have their own, I think they just use their signaling and, and train control on this little line. But this is a nice, well, piece of trivia, I think. Well, we are not able to go to Liechtenstein. This is where the doors are closed. ABB, all good. So I'm not entirely sure about the handling of this break here, what is more or less a holding break, I guess, because we have a break on this master controller as well. Now it has been released. You can see the brake cylinder pressure leaving the brake cylinders now before we apply a uh, tiny bit of power signal is showing us per Schubverbot aufgehoben that means shunting aloud the signal nacharmer, the signal repeater here is telling us that the next signal will be green been almost seeing it that we are in the starting procedure for PZB CD radar, hey! Yay, TSW4! So how much do we weigh, is uh, HA asking? Not that much, I guess. 116.7 tons in our four-car train. Yeah, and since we have the speed limit in the hut, there is actually no point in guessing when you have passed a certain point with your train. 
so I would really love to get rid of that green signal now there was already a station marker but that is not the station that we have to start at had to stop at this is a speed sign allowing us to go 140 they are a bit like the LF7 signs that was the CIFA in Germany with the exception that they are red instead of black this is the station where we do not stop Signal nach Alma telling us that we are getting a green light What is really a bit annoying is the thing with the PZB. Because you really have to guess what your train would actually do on the PZB stuff if you can't read it properly on your indicators. So let's see if we can do the slowdown for the station properly. We do not have this counter that counts us the yards or meters or whatever, but this this funny barbershop pole or whatever it is called. So we don't really know where we have to stop our train. And where is the speed sweet stop for stopping? As long as it is still twirling around a bit. So see how many points we're getting? Four hundred and eighty. AJSS try turning it to snow, maybe it's the wrong way around. What? What am I supposed to turn to snow? To show! Ah! Okay, sorry. <laughs> if I turn it to show in the settings... What did he say? Accessibility, show, current speed limit, show. It didn't change an awful lot, I should say. And there is no point to switch off. Hide. Apply. Yes. Back. Doesn't do anything. We're still allowed to go 140 and... We have to stop at Klaus in Fielberg. Drive by. Yeah. Contrary to the F7 in Kajong Pass, you're not getting a lot for your drive by here. <laughs> because the train is so short. Want the second one? Whoosh. It's 
station marker, but probably not for us. Yeah, see, the limit increased to 150, but we are pushing a 140 limit in front of us, I guess, because the train has a maximum authorized speed of 140. No, oh, speeding. It's always funny when you're going a route for the first time. There is so much that you have to look at. And after a while you just know what you have to control. What you have to... I'm really braking heavily here because I'm late on the brakes. It's bluesy. Okay, at least one car is still at the platform. Well, 158 instead of 180. Then you have to make an announcement. Please don't open the doors in the first car. Please don't open the doors in the first car. It is not safe to leave the train there. Or like CD Radar says for Prague Metro, you have to make an announcement. Sorry guys, I cannot open the door, I overshot. And maybe you did not want to go to Klaus in Vorarlberg anyway. So please enjoy the ride to the next station. You really, really like the Vector, for me it is the best loco in game. You totally can say that I have not touched it yet. Since I wanted to unbox everything on stream. But it looked great from what I saw on the stream. I did not watch too much. Because they were not answering my questions and I got bored. So... And nevertheless, I did not want to s to get spoiled with it. Oh, there is a limit of 60 before we get to Götze, so... We should not go too fast, maybe. Oh, what is it? One kilometer. Will the signal slow us down anyway? They will! This is an expect 60 here. I'm not sure if we're... Yeah, we're getting a PZB control here, even if we do not see a yellow trapezoid attached to the signal. That means I have to slow down to 80 within my limit and then prepare to slow down to 60. So the signal is actually getting us down to 60 here, even though line speed is 160 here. What is topic for Sunday? Sunday I will do the signaling on the Antelope Valley, the Metrolink signaling.
Tomorrow, Saturday, I want to talk about the Austrian signaling system and uh, Antelope Valley for Sunday. Again, expect 60 on the next main. Now we are at signal 60. Does not show in the game, it also only shows on the signal that we are limited to 60. But we are not controlled to 60 yet. So this is a thing that the game obviously does not do. It does not control the signal speed. Here is a switch that justifies the limit to 60 in a track speed 140 area. And now we can slow down to 40 until we get to the platform. Four hundred eighty seven. All right. You're not interested in American stuff. Well, you got to take your breaks as well. But I share the awe of AJ. Pixel fest because I was moving around the camera so much, probably. <whistles> Starting this train always has this feeling of applying power 25%, 30%, and nothing happens because the brakes are just releasing and then if you increase the power even more into the releasing brakes and all of a sudden the train breaks loose with screeching wheels ah here we go first time i got hit by a zwangsbremsung because i did not see my markers on the pcb Obviously, we have been in a restricted, yeah, whatever, 1000 or 500 hertz, I can't really tell, because I can't see if the yellow or the red light is on. Faintly, you can see the blue lights flashing alternatingly. Now they stopped. That was because of the prepare for 60. Here is again a 60 main signal. One hundred fifty line speed. Maybe I should have waited until I was across the second switch before accelerating beyond the 60. The Weichenbereich was probably not over yet. But anyway. Do we have to stop at this station here? Probably not.
the stutters should get better on the next run. Now we're getting a clear distance signal. Expect freie Fahrt. The LNER is not good. Really. I was really looking forward to playing this. What I'm supposed to close the main circuit breaker. You sure? Where is the main circuit breaker? It is here. Why did the main circuit breaker open? You like the Scotsman and the Vectron? Well, I've been on the Scotsman for a couple of seconds. At least it has a speedometer. Ah, it is good. Oh, sorry. That is Tiger Overload reading the chat, trying to figure out the PZB indicators here, trying to figure out where to stop in trying to play this route for the first time. Trying to figure out where to stop here. Maybe here. 490 points. That was the best stop so far. even though we are a little late with our penalty break. So the LNER is good. The Azuma. Then I can... That's the main reason. Yeah, the most challenging thing about running the uh, the old steam locomotives on Spirit of Stream is uh, steam is that they don't have a speed clock, and we don't always have pocket snickers with us, who is really good at guessing the speed. Repeater for a freie Fahrt, clear signal. Here's the clear signal. Dornbirnshoren is the next stop. And I think we are a line speed back, right? Yeah, 140. Well, I can look at the HUD now, but I'm not looking at the HUD. I'm always looking at the pause screen. Because that's what I am used to. So it, it, it hit it for me in my brain. If not on the screen. That's cheating too, but this is learning the route. When driving it for the first time, I need some replacement for a timetable to actually learn. And there is a limit to 130 because before we get to Dornbirne, Hatlerdorf. And from what I've read in the signaling rules, a reduction in speed limit is not announced if it is not more than 20%, uh, not more than 20 kilometers and whatever some percent. Hütteldorf, Hatlerdorf, second please. I thought there was something wrong with the door, but all is good. 
Hatlerdorf. Nordhütteldorf. So the stopping pole it turns orange from being grey before if we're getting closer. So is here our reduction to thirty? Can we see it? There's a trucks coming from the opposite direction. Now it is coming, the reduction to thin. It says 140 on the sign. So maybe it was before. And now we are at 130. But it clearly said 100, it clearly said 14 on the sign. And now we are in a limit of 13. Maybe only for the switch. That was only for the switch. There is something bleeding in, I'm afraid. So how close are we getting to shore? This is Hatlerdorf. We have to slow down to 120, 110 in the approach. So I can just let the train coast. Here is a station marker for our station. Yes. Signal are announced clear. Here's the platform. We are at 40. Again, guesswork where we have to stop. Maybe not the smoothest stops ever. 487. That is okay. Getting closer to it. <clears throat> but without a proper indication here. It's hard. And we're late. We are late. So I know this train from Wiener S-Bahn. I actually have never ridden on a Talent 1. Obviously the Talent 2 is everywhere in Germany. But the Talent 1? So how do you like the train, CD Radar, in real life? We love the city chat. So they say this train has a city chat interior.
And the city chat is, is it now is it, is that the train pulled by a Taurus? Or am I mixing up something there? Okay, this is not the best position to place yourself. Yeah, thank you very much. And the next one steps into that position. And City Chat is an EMU. They have so many chats in, in Austria. Now this is a long platform, I really don't know where to stop here. Maybe about here. Four and seventy six, not so good. Maybe I overshot it a bit. <coughs> but we are we are in a decline. So it's City chat interior. What does the interior for our train look like, by the way? Well, not too sophisticated, I should say. Four seven forty four and four seven forty six Austrian Baureihe. All right, Haselstauden is the next stop, and it is not far away because we are already supposed to be there in half a minute. What speed limit? One hundred and ten. Ah well, it says 120 on the Halbo, there will be a 110 reduction soon here. It is the Red 11. And the 120. Running downhill, 140, but already approaching the station. This bobber pole always jumps into existence. It's like boiling milk. You look at it, nothing happens, and then all of a sudden it's already melted to half its magnitude. Well, station, where are you? Around the corner. Yes, there it is. Must be a short platform. Sixty-one. That is getting worse and worse. But this is on the decline. We need to get a feel for the brakes on the decline here a bit better. No, oh, with that doesn't look so bad. Clouds sitting in the mountains. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. There is no much chance to get back onto the timetable if we have to stop every half minute. 
Then it will just a mass. 20 seconds and then we have to be at Schwarzach. So what do you think about the new um, overhead catenary representation? You sound so German when you pronounce these names. Yeah, well, do you want me to sound more Austrian? I can try to sound more Austrian. But Schwarzer is Austrian and German alike, I guess. A little less angry. Seventy-five. Well, it wouldn't be half bad if this barber pole whirling thingy had a distinct top, so that you can actually see when it is out of the indicator. So, if you get your master controller to minimum brake, the driver assistant tells you that you have to sh close the doors before applying power. Hmm. But I was not applying power, I was just reducing the brakes to the minimum. Now I'm applying power. Wolfurt. Well, to be honest, people in Vorarlberg, they have a quite distant accent. They don't necessarily sound like all... Like people from Vienna or the Steiermark. Do we have any limits? Not before we get to Lauterbach. Talent too, I always like to slow down with the tempo mod. Does not work that much or as good here. The train has a tempo mod, but I have not yet found a key that allows you to set the speed when you are or actu actually running with the tempo mod already. Maybe it is one that you can only just turn on and then it keeps the speed that you're at rather than you being able to adjust the speed sixty seven well Train actually has a Wapco 
brake system from what I've read. A Saab Wapco brake system. Computer controlled EP system with pneumatic backup. Built by a Wapco Webtech subsidiary in Sweden at the time. So here we have a freight a freight yard. Lauterach. Railjet is the thing with the Taurus pulled. Alright, thank you for getting my brain back in order. I knew there was some, some chat that is pulled by the Taurus. Piece at B. 1000 Hz should be on. Slowing down to 60. Preparing uh, to 80. Preparing for a limit to 60. Here's the station marker. Barber pole turning on. At the main signal we have to be down to 60. Probably we are going across a switch. Double green is 60. Next one will be 62. Don't know if we got a new 1000 Hz. Probably we did. So, I need to be careful that we probably will have a restricted 1000 Hz monitoring when we start again from the station. Barber pole has still a bit Sixty-six. Czech railways have seven of rail jets, and you used to work on them. Really, that is interesting. What did you do on the rail jets? Oops, that was a bit overdone. Now we're not getting a green light, but only a shunting allowed. What is the limit then? It stays at 60. We're going, uh, we're going the branch line towards St. Margarita already. Hard Fusach. Yeah. And here we are. What di what did I say? What did I say? I need to be careful that I di do not miss the starting program. Okay. Okay, the release was not enough, but with moving the reverser around, 
It worked. So, now having my PZB indicator is really getting me. If you look at that thingies, those thingies closely, you can see that they are flashing alternati alternatingly. But this is really not easy to see. Can I release? Yes, I release. So, limit I think is 80 on those switches, but it already increases to 130 here. I think there is a reduction to 110 somewhere around here on the branch line. Yes, there is. Down the valley. But we're stopping at Hartfusach. Anyway. But that was weird that the penalty brake was not releasable with the release key. Four hundred and twenty seven is is there the the delay already incorporated or what? Because if it is only stopping accuracy Oh did you see HA we got a tie in this DLC? So listen now is the last one and we should already be there uh, for future reference. The 110 starts just behind the station. What are you saying Reddit is? The tie, yes. It's a red tie. Probably for the UBB. Limit increasing to 130. So you can make up for some time.
no. The time is not incorporated yet, and now we're speeding because I was checking other things. And we have to slow down for the prepare for 60. Slow down to 80, slow down to 80, slow down to 80, slow down to 80. Before we get the trunk spam song, but we made this. So I'm afraid we won't get the purple heart on this run. Sixty and stop is what this signal is telling us. Stop most probably at the station. Shunting signal on the floor. This thing is warning us about an income reduction to 130. What is obviously an increase. But maybe not if you are going on the straight line. From the flashing of the 85 indicator you can see that you have a thousand hertz monitoring on. But you can't see if you get the 500 hertz. Approaching the red. So maybe we're not getting a 500 hertz at all. So what does the pole say? Here, or later, or earlier, or 22. Interesting. Well, this takes some feeling into the matter. Since they don't put up stop markers for your train here at the platform. And if you, like me, switch off the stop marker in the game, and it's a bit of a puzzle to find out where you're actually supposed to stop. Yeah. Well, we got the purple art anyway. Look at this. Objectives completed. All the stops. Distance driven. Why does it say used safety systems not, apl not applicable? We're used to safety systems, do we? Or maybe you only got a well a reduction if you're not turning them on. Correct cats cap setup not applicable. Speeding minus sixty five. Oh, you can see where you actually got some speeding reductions here. Yes, I remember that. Both times I was reading the chat and we got the reduction. No wipers in the rain. Well obviously we did not get any rain. On time bonus, accuracy bonus. And the other stuff does not apply. So for stumbling through the route for the first time, you can e even still get your purple heart. And, uh, well, this this is annoying me here. Level brittle, brittle, brittle out of <laughs> 22 million. I hope they fix this. Because that is not gratifying, this jumble. So, I guess we look at the Vectron on the while back. Well, actually, it's the time, 20 past 20. To the trains. Is the Vectron... No, it's probably not in the journey, or does it have its own journey? 
Trucks, trucks, trucks. No, it's all trucks. It should have its own. But it does not have. Ah, it, do, it does not live in Vorarlberg, right? The Vectron, it, it lives in Dresden. Let's see if Dresden has a Vectron legacy. Yes, the Vectron has its own journey and lives in Dresden. Vec training. Let's do the, the Vectron introduction. Let's see what they tell you about the Vectron. Vectron introduction. In this introduction, you'll be learning to drive this Siemens Vectron locomotive. Okay, During this introduction, you'll be covering the critical driving controls and freight operations. When you're ready, climb aboard. Well, I have to say, it looks nice. Just like the Vectron that you see in real life. Sit in the driver's seat. And actually, I was lucky enough to be on board of a real Vectron a couple of weeks ago on this event on the freight yard and uh, talk to the driver of this locomotive. And she told me that in Austria you had to operate a button. That is, if you go into the machine room here on the top right, it actually switches the brake system in a way that the Vectron is no longer using any air brakes on the locomotive when um, you're running freight in Austria. And it is blending in the air brakes together with the e-brake. Use the master key to activate the control desk. If you're running in Germany. Set the headlights to indicate that this locomotive is operational. Headlights must be used regardless of the time of day or weather. Well, it's behind the seat. Oh, but look, the buttons for the parking brake are illuminated. Warning signal lights, signal lights, auto, and headlights. All right. No, it wants us to put it to auto. Then we the do direction that. of travel in a Vectron locomotive is determined by the reverser buttons. Aha, uh -huh. this is a bit like on the G6. Train brake cut out, cut in. Now we can release the brakes and get ready to move. Bremse angelegt. PCB, LCB, Störbetrieb aktiv. That means we have cut it out. And CIFA is not active, you can see it here. Well, but I want my safety systems on. AJ says it only looks okay-ish. Reading light fuse open. Why would that be open? Horn high fuse open. Well, they don't want us to use the high horn. Horn low fuse open. Does that mean that we don't have any horn? Well, let's turn it on. So where is the safety system stuff? See if you can find it with the alternate camera views. Wipers. Computer ah, we have to switch it on, on the on the screen, I guess, huh? Here we can probably switch what kind of energy system we want 
you can have 15 kilovolts, 25 kilovolts German system, that means frequency 16 two thirds hertz, and Austria, Swiss, and the same for France, even the weird 1.5 kilovolts, kilovolts for France. So how do we get out of here again? Home. Bremskraft. Zugkraft. Oberstrom. Uh, this brake force, traction force, overhead catenary, energy, PCB mode we can select, brake mode we can select, we can train lights, Betriebsart for the Notbremsüberbrückung, that is to override if some passenger wants to activate the emergency brake. Uh, so this is what we can select here. I see. Well, what we still can't do... RFB. RFB. That is RFB. the... RFB. 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 Here we can select RFB. our signals. For one. And hinten. That means at front and back. So at front we want ZG1 and at the back we won't. Do we want anything? I don't even know if we have any cars connected to us. If we don't have any cars, then we probably want ZG2 here for our lights. But why did it not go? On top of it, now I think we want the light setting here. But we still did not find how we can turn on our safety systems. And I did not find that we can switch off the Nachbremswirkung. So why don't you think that it really looks great? AJ. Main data. Well, there are obviously three insulation or isolation switches that we have not seen so far ah here they are they don't really look as if they are real well now we can go back set the train brake to running so we have a IFB we have a throttle we have a train brake running move the throttle into the power range you like the javelin well obviously the javelin cannot cannot pull any freight cars can it 40 kilometers <laughs> yeah, well. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements.
So it will be interesting to see how this kind of display actually displays. Oh shit, I was speeding. Actually displays a restricted monitoring in PZB. That was the CIFA sound. Come to a stop using the brake. Why is that train running away? We're not in the gradient, are we? They told us to use the train brake, right? The freight wagons are behind us. Change direction with the reverser, then change the junction indicated either by walking over to it or using the map. Okay. Reversing. And then... I... Do neither. At least I try to do neither. The junction is correctly aligned. You can now couple up to the freight. Approach slowly and stop just before the buffers. All right. I won't change cabs because they asked us to reverse. And I won't change the signal lights anyway. I'm just reversing backwards. Well, I think the surface of this locomotive looks really nice. And for, uh, well, from what I've seen from the Flying Scotsman, it's also there that the material has improved a lot. The older steam locomotive had this a bit artificial, matte surface. Whereas you would probably expect some of this glossy, emily, this unregular glossiness of lacquered metal. I think they got it better now. Bonk, that this locomotive uses manual hook couplers, which will need to be connected. You can couple and uncouple from either an external camera or on foot. Let's connect the formation using the external camera. That's what we did. Oh, we get blue gondola cars. Press the one key to return to the first person view. Nice okay. work. Change direction with the reverser and move the train forward to the indicated siding. Right. Are we aligned properly? Well, 
There is not much to align. You can couple and uncouple from either an external camera or on foot. Uncouple from the wagons on foot this time. Stand up and head outside. All right, all right, all right. Not through the window, through the door. Nice work. That concludes the basics of operating this locomotive. Okay. Obviously, I need to get the feel for the mixture of the holding brake and the train brake to get better here. Let's see, was it in the training center last plate? No. It was on Dresden North again. Well, we got our purple art anyway, so the threshold is not so super high for the platinum medal from where you can see even with us blundering through the first time meeting a new train it is totally possible to get there well i think i have to take out the dogs now i will be back at um nine central european time that is 7 p.m utc with the antelope valley and la i have not touched a little or, or the tiniest bit of it so it will be interesting how this works out. Thank you very much so far and see you soon.